<clears throat> All right, last time we went through some basics of video editing, and we almost got through editing our first video. What I want to do is I want to take a step back, and I talked a bit about the first assignment, the first video assignment, that is, that's required, and I want to take a step back and talk about then the second video assignment. Um, the second video assignment is you creating a, a PSA. A PSA is a public service announcement. Now, I encourage you to have fun with this and not look at it as something boring and, and dumb, but look at it as something that you can, you can have fun with. You're welcome to, if you don't feel like doing a PSA or public service announcement, um, do, uh, do a little you know fake commercial if you want to. I've had students to do that and that's fine. Let me explain, explain to you the reason why I picked this kind of assignment for the video. Well, for one thing, video files can get big, and um, I wouldn't want to have to upload, have you upload a 100 megabyte video file or something crazy like that. In addition to that, the thought process is to make a commercial, to make an effective commercial, um, requires planning and will likely require some sort of editing. All right. In other words, if I were to just say, you know, make a video about, you know, some topic, you could just sort of show up, turn on the camera, ramble for X number of minutes, and then be done with it. All right. To really do a good job in this, you know, we're, I'm not interested just in, in learning, uh, or rather in teaching the, the technical aspects, the mechanical aspects, but I also want you to begin thinking of like what makes for an effective video. And we talked before, and there's resources in Angel that describe what makes an important video. When you have a commercial or a public service announcement, you got a very short amount of time to get people's attention. All right? If you don't get their, if you don't grab their attention within that very small time frame, then you know your your commercial is not going to be effective. You want it to be memorable. You want it to stick in people's heads. Um, there's oh, there, there's one commercial. I'm trying to think. Expedia, is that is that a common one? Expedia. I have no idea what they do. But I like remember their commercial. Travel works. Okay, yeah, it's like so. So obviously they kind of failed if their commercial sticks in my mind, but I don't know exactly what what it's for. So you want to get your message across. So again, part of this class is the technical stuff. So you'll get that by the the, the editing of the video to make sure the edit of the video is within the. I think I gave a constraints of 50 seconds to a minute. So unless you're very lucky talking. You're going to go a little bit over or a little bit under and have to reshoot and add stuff and so on. So, again, the technical part of video editing will be handled by that portion of the assignment, making sure you get it within the time frame. All right? But then there's a the design aspect. And the design aspect is thinking about what you're going to do in advance, planning it in such a way that you're going to make an impact. And I think that that's something that's very important to consider as well. And, and therefore, we have that. I, I created a PSA for one of my classes that I was taking, actually, as a student. We were able to work in groups. If you want to work in groups, you're welcome to, but I'll make the requirements a little more stringent. So if you want to work in a group, just talk to me about it and we'll figure something out. Here's my acting debut. And I'm going to save this link so that we can bring it into Windows Movie Maker in a few minutes here, provided it, it handles this type of file. We'll have to see. All right. I suppose I should turn the projector on, eh?
here we go. Or not. Just kidding. What's it opening? go. Some of the files currently associated. Yeah. Alright, here we go. There's a little disclaimer on the bottom. This is a bunch of years ago before people had an awareness, awareness of spyware. And uh, if you couldn't see it, I guess I could make it bigger, you could, you could run it. But essentially it, it showed me surfing on the internet and someone personifying spyware sneaking up and writing down my information and says, if you don't know anything about spyware, spyware may know something about you. And uh, as you can tell, I did a great job as a clueless person just surfing the internet and, and sitting there. Right. Um, at any rate, a minute isn't a long time. So you have to, you know, when we shot this, we thought we shot a minute's worth. We had like three minutes worth. So we really had to cut stuff down. And we had to decide like where to put the words in so it would make sense. There's a lot of decisions that we had to make, but those are all like design decisions. Those are all part of figuring out how you're going to make the most impact. The technical part then is doing the editing, bringing the titles in and, and all that sort of thing. All right. Now, what I want to do is we got so far with editing, but we didn't quite go the whole distance as far as editing goes. We brought something into Windows Movie Maker and we played around with it. I actually used the downloader uh, to download uh, one of my lecture videos and I just chopped it up a bit and inserted some pictures and all that. I want to kind of do the same thing to review um, with this. We might as well use this video since we have it, uh, provided that Windows Movie Maker can export uh, QuickTime files. But I'll bring that in and then what? And then we will um, look at exporting it to uh, a, a, a format that can be viewed. Remember, this, like much multimedia, there's going to be your working files where you're editing and making the changes, and then there's going to be the version that you export to make public. So just like in Photoshop, you have the PSD files, or in GIMP, you have the whatever those letter files are. I forget. Um, yeah. I want to say ODS, but that's open office. Spreadsheet. Whatever. <laughs> XCF, I think. There we go. Um, or in, in Audacity, you have the Audacity files, and then you export it to an MP3. There's the same sort of process you go through here. Um, so, what I'm going to do is... Let's fire up Windows Movie Maker. Again, for you Mac fans out there, iMovie works virtually the same. We did talk a little bit about some open source alternatives last time. I'm more interested in you like using some video editing software. The specifics I don't really mind. Alright. And that did not import that. All right. What I'm going to do, rather than going through the hassle of the YouTube uh, problem, I'm actually going to go on Angel and pull one of the 
pull one of the, um, I'm already on Angel, so I'm going to go to Angel and pull one of my lectures down so I can import it. Let's pull down a CISS 216 lecture. Actually, it's, uh, yeah, let's pull this one down. I don't know why I'm agonizing over it. And I'm going to save it into that folder. And then I'll go into Windows Movie Maker and import it. And there we go. It's imported. Um, if you absolutely needed something for, like for example, that, that QuickTime file, because I'm just demonstrating and I don't really care what video I work on, I just said, oh, well, this one doesn't work, let me try another one, all right? If you would happen to have a snippet of a video that you absolutely had to include in your presentation, and it wasn't a format that you didn't understand, keep in mind there's all sorts of video uh, converters out there. I think I put a link to one of them where you can convert files between one format and another. You right. can do it online without even downloading any software. The, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, there, there's excellent. That, that's excellent. So again, you can you can go and you can do uh, do that to uh, to um, do the conversion. If you found that you know you absolutely had to bring that file in and it was of the wrong type, that's one thing. Again, that that sort of um, sort of the business of multimedia developers is going in and as needed being able to convert from format to format. All right, we talked last time how I could go in and cut part of it off, like maybe the first part where I'm staring at my beverage. So it looks like the whole thing. There we go. That's just the way the thumbnail works. I'm starting to stir to life. Does this software have any kind of a linear view? What do you mean by linear view? Well, if, if you well, think in terms of like audacity. Oh, like a timeline view? Yeah. Uh, I know it used to. Let's go up under view and see our choices. Zoom in, zoom out, reset, thumbnail size, aspect ratio, zoom out. It doesn't appear like it does. I don't like that either. I like I like the, the timeline where I could just scroll horizontally across, but um, you know, that's that's what you get here. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna go and edit this and I will split split it. Delete this part of the clip. And then for good measure, I'll split it here again. Oops, did I do that? I'll split it again. There we go. And delete this part of the clip. We can then go in and we can add things such as um, images, if we wanted to. I could go in and under home, I could go and add a still picture if I wanted to. Can you add a still picture to a frame? Say you want to have a smaller box with an image? An image within image? Yes. I don't believe in Windows Movie Maker you can. Okay. Yeah, that um, that's a good uh, question. I have seen other video, video editing. Camtasia is one that I use uh, a lot. That That's a recording. And it allows you to do recording and like screen capture. So it's, that's like good for like training. Because what I could do actually um, is I could be... Um, maybe working through an Excel spreadsheet, all right? And it could be capturing my screen, and then there'd be a little frame inside there showing me, 
So I could be like talking and whatever, and you'd see me, but then you'd also see the screen. There's, so. a, there's a free version. Yeah, I think there's a trial version or a free version for it. Maybe it's oh, maybe well, there's limited. A, there's one that's totally free, and it's based on Camtasia, and it's, it's not quite as elaborate. Okay. Yeah, I lose track of these sometimes, all the, all the different ones out there. And I can go and set titles and so on. Oops. I can bring that up to the beginning. And you can put credits and all those great things you can do. And we talked a little bit last time about animations that go, transitions. So I could go and put on this a transition so that when it started, actually let's put on this one a trans uh, transition. What? <laughs> I think I think I kept hitting the play. I kept and it kept like jumping forward and back. Real class. I don't think that transition did anything because the screen was blank. And there we go. All right. Um, if you want torture, by the way, just have to watch videos of yourself constantly. That is, it's so you know, it's like I cringe every time I I, I look at those. I think uh, it's just I don't know. It's just very very self conscious. All right, I know, I know you guys are thinking, I, you guys cringe when you watch videos of me as well, so. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save it as a Windows Movie Maker project. All right, so I'll go up here and click save. And we can put it where we want to. I'm gonna put it in the same folder. And this will be my suggestion, that you put everything in the same folder. That way it's just easier to, to keep track of. Because remember, the Windows Movie Maker file that you're going to save doesn't contain your actual video. It contains like information about the video. All right? It contains pointers to the actual video clips. So if I go, we'll call this, for lack of imagination, my movie. I'll save it. I can go back in and edit it. And I'm right back where I started. And everything's all in there. But if we look at this file size for this, file size for that is tiny. It's 5 KB. I mean, you can't get a decent sized image in that space. So it's clear that this isn't holding the actual video itself. It contains pointers to the video. So where is it? So where are those files? It's this file. In other words, you know, we can speculate what's in there. What's in that movie file, or, or what's in the Windows Movie Maker file, are probably little things like, I want to play from two minutes in that video. So the raw to, data is so, in the So the raw data is in the video file. Okay. All right? And we can more or less prove that. Let's move it. So I move the video out of there. It should, <laughs> should be able to find it. And, yeah, we got a bunch of ugly X's. It can find the title because it can save that information, but it can't find any of the video. If we go and move that back, then we should be in business again. If I'm designing, uh, say, in Photoshop or some uh -huh. other program, uh, graphics files to go right. in there, what size should I be using? Well, uh, what's, the, what's what, the native size for that format? The native size or the native... Um, with by uh, aspect ratio in, in, in pixels. Um, that comes into play when you actually go and export it, I believe. Let's look here. There's a properties. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, when you go to export it, that's where it will set that. Now there'll be limitations based on. And 
the size of the... 480p will be 720 by right. 4 inch. Okay. Right. Okay. All right, good. All right. So now we have this. Again, I would put everything in that one folder just so that you don't lose track of it. All right? And for your assignment, I just want the end of, you know, the final video. Uh, so I don't need the Windows Movie Maker players, uh, files, rather. But um, if you do, you know, you probably do want to keep it just in case you decide that, you know, gee, it was, you know, I timed it again and it was a minute 10 seconds. I need to chop some more stuff off. So you would, you'd want to go and do that. All right. So when we're all done, we can go and we can say save movie as. And we have a number of choices here. I thought there was sort of a wild card one where I could go in and save it, you know, in whatever format I wanted, you know, where I would, you know, sort of a custom one. But I guess you have these possible things to do. Let's go and let's save this for a mobile portable device. And again, we have a choice of how to export it which we don't have a choice of how to export it. It's going to export as a Windows Media vi uh, video, my mistake. And I can then go and put this anywhere. I'll put it on the desktop. And that'll be the WMV movie. This takes a while, depending on how big your video is and how powerful your processor is. All right? This can take a long time if you're running an older machine and you're running a big video. All right? This isn't taking too bad. It's, it's chugging along at a decent rate, and it's exporting it. Once we export it, it's in a format, then, that can be consumed by people readily. All right? So this is sort of the common format that I was speaking of. So now, I could theoretically delete these. I'm not going to, but... I would have the results of it in this movie. And there we go. All right. So now we want to put it on a web page. All right. And I know some of you have done some HTML, some of you haven't. And uh, it's my goal in this class, uh, twofold goal. If you have not done HTML, to just introduce you to some HTML. If you have done some HTML, to possibly get you to looking at some new things, for example, how to incorporate multimedia elements, uh, specifically using the HTML5 stuff. So for this class, I'm not worried about cross-browser compatibility. You know, just make sure it works with HTML5 on a newer browser. I typically use Chrome to test things just because that has a very good HTML5 support. Now. You can code HTML using any plain text editor you want. And when I teach the web development class, I typically have people just using like Notepad or some other simple text editor. But because this isn't an HTML class per se, I'm going to show you a nice tool that's free. It's a recurring theme of this class, I think. called the Komodo Editor. As opposed to the Komodo Dragon. Don't download a Komodo Dragon. Those things are, are horrible. I guess they're, they're great, but they'd be scary if you could download one. All right. Away we go. What's nice about this is this will allow you to uh, use IntelliSense. Um, I don't know if they call it IntelliSense, but I think the Microsoft term for it is IntelliSense. That's where if you start to type something in, it will like show you what your options are. And that's a nice little uh, learning tool. All right? I don't actually use this tool in my intro class because I don't want people to have that little bit of a crutch. I want them to work through and learn it on their own. But again, in this class, since the focus is on HTML, we can provide uh, that little bit of assistance uh, to you. So this will take a couple minutes to download.
and we can install it, and then we can get to working on um, embedding our video on a web page. Now, HTML5 made big progress as far as standardizing the way videos and other multimedia elements are put on the page. Um, in the past, there would be browser plugins and there would be special tags that worked in one uh, platform but not the other. HTML5 does a, 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 does a good progress to try to standardize that. So there's actually tags in the language to include this, where in the past there wasn't tags within HTML to handle video and the like. There's a site that I use in a lot of my classes that W3, you thank you, yeah, W3 schools. That might not be perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And I would suggest you go, again, and maybe look through some of these tutorials. The one we're going to focus in on is the HTML5 on. And specifically, what we're going to look at is HTML5 Today video. And here's a little example of that. And I'll wait until... The Komodo editor finishes and so we go and do this. That's, to Mozilla, Where do you see that? At the very beginning. Okay. Um, I don't know. Keep in mind, Mozilla is a project in addition to being a web browser. Um, so I did not notice uh, that uh, flash by. When did HTML5 come out? The specification is still under development. All right. So, I mean, as far as it being out, keep in mind the way these specifications work is that the, the people writing the specification and the people that develop browsers are sort of doing this in tandem. So. They may have started on the specification, I don't, I don't recall, a couple years back. But the problem is, is once you start on it, none of the browsers support it at all. So you could start using it, but it probably wouldn't do you much good. As time goes on, the browser makers incorporate more and more of these things into their browsers, uh, which makes it more attractive for people to use and, and so on. Um, if you, uh, th there is a, a couple uh, good sites that tell you like what browsers support which HTML5 features. But no browser really supports all HTML5 uh, features. Chrome does as good a job as any of them, I would say. All right, so let me launch Komodo here. I can go here and I can say new HTML5 document. Or not. All right. This actually gives me an HTML4, but I'm going to replace that code with the code I'm copying from the website, so we should be okay. Okay. 